bone health, chronic inflammation, osteoimmunology, and more. For the practitioner and the curious, this is part one of two, Mark Lorenzato, MD, presenting for videohealthguide.com. Healthy bone diet, exercise, and avoid chronic inflammation. That's the formula for healthy bone. It starts with considering and applying the paleo legacy model of diet as a means of prevention. This means we should seek to replicate levels of starch, sugar, sodium, refined oils prior to agriculture, as well as supplementing with molecules to get the same balance of molecules we had before agriculture as the basis of good nutrition. Lack of exercise contributes to osteoporosis and bone weakening. The exercise needs to have some impact nature to it. And inflammatory processes, particularly chronic immune stimulation from infection, autoimmune disease, repetitive trauma, repetitive microtrauma, and from cancers, all contribute to bone breakdown and the weakness of bone. Negative effects of medications can be pronounced. Disease processes that impact, impact bone health can be through the endocrine system as well as through the immune system. And osteoporosis special precautions need to be taken to avoid fractures. Some diet issues. Electrolyte balance. High cereal diets result in excessive phosphorus and phosphate relative to calcium. These have been embraced since agriculture. High sodium from processed food or added salt worsens bone strength, causes other complications. Vitamin D deficiency and vitamin K deficiency are common. Both of these have a paleo legacy. We evolved closer to the equator, not wearing clothes, not in wooden structures. Vitamin K2 was likely acquired from animals that had eaten K1 through green vegetables, green leafy plants, and then converted to K2. Now we find it only in fermented products. Pretty much we don't have game meat in our diets in general. Amino acid imbalance from the polypeptides, mostly in meat, is common. These include L-carnitine, L-carnosine, creatine, choline. Inflammatory diets <clears throat> can be from celiac disease, from gluten, soy, casein allergies or reactivities, and from diets out of balance with fatty acids. The omega-3, omega-6 ratio probably has a significant effect on our general prostaglandin population and can contribute when in balance to minimizing problems with bone strength. Fried foods and oils and cooking, these refined oils generally lack fat-soluble antioxidants and fat-soluble vitamins and are problematic. Deficient omega-3s, the DHA and EPA that we now get from the ocean before came from game animals, and deficiency in conjugated linoleic acids are a complex problem because the supplements are quite different than what we would get in nature. And we no longer get substantial amount, many people no longer get substantial amount of these CLAs. High fat diets, including saturated fats, are problematic for many reasons, not particularly for bone, but through the difference in the fat soluble antioxidants, they do contribute to bone weakness and high fat production from starches likewise creates fats in our lipoproteins that are deficient in fat soluble vitamins and antioxidants relative to the amount of energy they deliver and this contributes to the inflammatory processes which undermine bone strength. Nuclear factor kappa of light chain enhancer of activated B cells or nuclear factor kappa B is a molecular complex that is found in most cells of our body that when stimulated results in transcription of a number of cytokines that play out the inflammatory process. In a sense, it amplifies inflammation. Turn on the nuclear factor kappa B and many cytokines are produced, including interleukins 1, 6, tumor, necros tumor necrosis factor, and rankel, all which contribute to damaged bone. We'll see how. It is also released in response to cytokines and oxidized LDL par particles and stressors. So nuclear factor, when it is activated, creates a positive feedback cycle. The chronic release of it in ongoing infections is out of the context of what our immune system would normally do. Normally, it's a release over one or two hours and then subsides and the adaptive immune response 
begins after the this initial part of our immune response, the innate response. So a trigger of the innate immune response causes nuclear factor kappa B to be released, causing cytokine release, and normally that would quell over some time as communication between white cells moved into the adaptive response. Rank L is a surface-bound protein on osteoblasts and activates osteoclasts, or bone breakdown. So rank L activates the surface-bound rank, which is a receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa B, proteins on osteoclasts. It is pro-inflammatory. T helper 1 cells and T helper 2 cells have different roles. They're both part of our adaptive immune response. T helper 1s more are affected by viruses and bacteria, T helper 2s by organisms. There are pro-inflammatory cytokines, the interleukon 1, interleukon 6, and tumor necrosis factor that play central parts here. There are many other cytokines. Interleukon 6 may inhibit red cell productions. One of the reasons we see in anemia commonly in people with osteoporosis, it's part of the same complex process. So looking at the inflammatory currents, we have an innate immune response. Macrophages, when responding to antigens, release pro-inflammatory cytokines. Pro-inflammatory cytokines stimulate the release of nuclear factor kappa B. And of, from that, those are found on most cells. The nuclear kappa B affects cell DNA transcription for a cascade of inflammatory factors to be released. If inflammation is not contained, then the adaptive immune response proceeds. Macrophages and dendritic cells get it activated. Antigen-presenting cells of the immune system, the dendritic cells, play a central role in signaling and attracting more T cells. The T cells activate the adaptive response. So we've amplified things. Activated T cells send pro-inflammatory cytokines, stimulating more tumor necrosis factor in rank L. And then rank L directs macrophages, dendritic cells, to areas of infection and activates osteoclasts to break down bone. Rank L, under normal circumstances of declining release of nuclear factor kappa B, dwindles as the underlying cause of the immune stimulation dissipates. In persistent infection, as in osteoporosis, the tumor necrosis factor kappa B release continues. T helper cells 1, adaptive of the adaptive immune response, as I said, are stimulated more with viral and bacterial antigens, but they stimulate white blood cells through release of pro-inflammatory cytokines. And T helper cells 2 also release antibodies. Normally, these are in check, perhaps partially due to the fact that we live out of context of our paleo legacy. The immune system now is more inflammatory in nature, has more oxidative stress. It loses inflammatory balance, producing excess T1 activation, which overproduces nuclear factor kappa B. The factors stimulate T1 and overproduce nu nuclear factor kappa B include the release of rank L. Pathogens and viruses contribute, oxidized fats, glucose, some proteins and toxins contribute. Other inflammatory processes, redness, swelling, heat, and pain may be absent, yet this inflammatory process goes on, breaking bone down. Other participants in inflammation. The participants in inflammation are, as we've said, the interleukons, 1, 6, 11, the cytokines, tumor necrosis factor, rank L, but also the balance of DHA and EPA have an effect on inflammation, as does the context of vitamin D, vitamin K, and hormonal regulation of bone. The relative osteoclast to osteoblast activity ultimately determines breakdown versus formation. Osteocytes can be a transitional state, as we've seen. There is an ebb and flow of bone mass in nature. Bone density changes over age. Bone density can change over seasons. Bone density changes with immune modulation, with the macrophages, dendritic cells, T cells, as we undergo infection or inflammation. Bone density changes as a result of diet. There's a strong link to this by individuals who have a lysine weak diet or poor diet, as vegetarians do from having excess cereal. They will not make collagen or absorb calcium as well. The role of calcium absorption and management is a major part of good bone strength. 
rank L, rank, and osteoprotegerin. Rank is a membrane protein expressed on osteoclast and dendritic cells. Osteoclast, the cells that break down bone, and dendritic cells, the cells of the immune system. Osteoclast and dendritic cells come from the same hemopoietic progenitors, the same stem cell line. Rank L, expressed on osteoblast, and the surface and secreted from osteoblast, signals precursors to osteoblasts to differentiate into osteoclasts. Rank L is expressed on activated T cells and results in dendritic cell activation through the rank binding. So we see the crossover between the immune system and the bone structure and bone structure. Osteoprotegerin is produced by dendritic cells. It is a decoy receptor for rank L. It competitive inhibits rank L binding to rank and therefore is a control mechanism. Bone stem cells are at the basis for osteoimmunology. The hematopoietic cell line includes the cells that produce RBCs, red blood cells, T cells, which will release rank L in inflammation and stimulate osteoclast production. The pre-osteoclasts to osteoclasts, macrophages and dendritic cells. The mesenchymal cell line also produces adipocytes or fats, and therefore people with osteoporosis tend to have more fat in their bone marrow. Oxidized blood lipids stimulate PPAR gamma to produce stimulation of these T cells. So oxidized lipoproteins, poor diet, stimulates mesenchymal cell line and bone, which fuels breakdown of bone and increased fat in the marrow. So our overview of bone strength and systemic inflammation relative to the immune system and our bones involve rank, which is a membrane protein on osteoclasts and dendritic cells, rank L, which is the rank ligand found on stroma cells, and stroma cells involved are cells involving the connective tissue support and repair for bone, and osteoblasts and T cells. Osteoblasts and osteocytes have a relationship where osteocytes are produced when their osteoblasts are isolated. We're not getting into that. Macrophages of the immune system signal T cells to release nuclear factor kappa B, very important part, and T1 helper cells and T2 helper cells are involved T1 as an adaptive immune response that release rank L. And T2 send out antibodies to attack foreign elements, as do T1s to uh, some degree. So the dendritic cells are antigen-presenting cells of the immune system. They're clearly at play. Tumor necrosis, excuse me, nuclear factor kappa B is the key immune regulatory protein complex released in inflammation by most cells of the body. And the nuclear factor kappa light chain enhancer of activated B cells is its full name. No one says that anymore. Found in most cells, released in a response to cytokines, oxidized LDL, therefore bad food, and is part of the trigger of our innate immune response. That's mostly the core of this little talk. Our immune system imbalance. The continuum of nuclear factor kappa B release promotes cytokines in an ongoing way. Usually this is a transient immune response, but if it's perpetuated, it creates a systemic inflammation that's ongoing without redness or swelling. The adaptive immune response through T cells, T helper cells, is the main part of it with the T1 cells retaining more activity. These attract white blood cells and they release cytokines. The cytokines are pro-inflammatory. The T1 helper are stimulated, as I said, by poor diet, glucose, antigens, foreign particles, toxins. The release of rank L is a pro-inflammatory cytokine and T2 cells send out antibodies that attack foreign elements. Remember, these are more involved in helminths, worms, and other organisms in general over our prehistory to our present uh, dietary situation. In conclusion, as an overview, bone health is maintained with diet, physical conditioning, but is undermined by chronic inflammation Osteoimmunology defines the mechanisms of bone reabsorption and production. Osteoporosis is fueled by inflammation. Diet fueling inflammation need to be corrected. Paleolegacy theory supports a paleolegacy diet plan that can limit bone loss by limiting inflammation 
and maintaining healthy electrolyte balance, providing needed proteins and polypeptides, as well as vitamin K2, vitamin D. And before prescribing medications, it's important to go through categorically if these are going to affect bone and discuss these with patients. There is a part two of osteoimmunology and bone health.